ex-criminals. What were some crimes you committed that made you think, even if for a moment, that something supernatural or paranormal was going on? Story one. One night, I was boosting some silverware from this old lady's house. She was home, but old people are pretty deaf and slow, so I didn't give a shit. I hear this strange sound coming from the room where she's watching TV. Volume way loud, Grandma. So I go look, and she's like having a seizure or some shit. I might be a thief, but I'm not a bastard. So I call 911. They answer. Shit, I don't know what to say. Hi, I was just robbing this old lady's house and she's having a seizure. So I froze and said nothing. I wait with her, but she stops seizing and then I hear sirens. So I hide in her tiny front hall closet with the full doors and shutters. Before the EMTs arrive, she stops seizing. So by the time they get to her door, she seems fine except confused why they're at her house. They make nice, apologize, and leave. As soon as they're gone, she starts seizing again. So I called 911 again, just in case. Really don't want a dead lady in my conscious. Same thing. Sirens, she stops seizing, answers the door. It's like a comedy at this point with me hiding in the closet. The bad guy with the heart of gold. But I'm not about to pop out and say, but she was having a seizure. So they leave, just as they drive away with her waving an old lady goodbye. She falls down and starts seizing again. Now it's just sad funny. Gotta call 911 again for grandma. But this time I'm thinking about leaving a note or something, because I do want to get out of there. I call. Wait for the sirens. Then she stops breathing. I'm thinking if I don't get out of there, murder charge. I hide as the EMTs come through the door put an oxygen mask on her and take her away. By this point, my adrenaline is through the roof. I feel like I've earned the right to take as much shit as I can walk out the door with. And since the house is now empty, I can take my time going through her stuff. Silverware, jewelry, cash in a shoebox, you name it. If I can find it, it's mine. A fee for being a good Samaritan. If the EMT doesn't come back, who knows why? I hide again. He walks into the living room, turns the TV off, and grabs a bag off her chair. This is the part that Fs me up. As he turns to go, an old man just appears out of nowhere, pats him on the back, and whispers something to him. But the EMT doesn't react at all. Doesn't turn around. Doesn't pause. Just heads back out the door like the old man isn't even there. Then the old guy glides to the front window and stands there, waving goodbye. Then he disappeared. I'm standing in the closet frozen, wondering what just happened. When I feel it, somebody's breathing down my neck. Get out of my house. I started running, praying, crying right out of the front door. I didn't care who saw. I ran. To this day, whenever someone says scared straight, I try not to remember the sound of that old man's voice, but I always do. Wow, that's quite the roller coaster of a story. At first, you think you're gonna hear a typical bad guy story, but then it takes a turn for the unexpected. It's kinda admirable that despite being in the middle of a robbery, the protagonist decided to call 911 and potentially save someone's life. But honestly, the fact he felt entitled to steal from a nice old lady who had a medical emergency made me really mad. Like, that lady almost died and now you want to steal from her? What a jerk. This might be a situation where it's actually good that a ghost came. I guess ghost one, jerk robber zero. Story two. When I was 14, 33 now, I used to boost cars for this car theft ring in California. I did it for several months and never got caught. It was more of a thrill and lack of direction from living in a bad area and lack of supervision and authority in my life. I had never been arrested or got caught. I was always a good kid, but I rebelled after my parents split up. Anyway, there was this one car that I needed to pick up and get delivered that day. The boss was extremely insistent that the order needed to be filled within a few hours. It was another job like any other, but when I was about a mile away from my order, I got a very uneasy and disturbing feeling. Nothing was out of the ordinary or different from the dozens of other jobs I'd done, but I couldn't shake the feeling. As I got closer to my destination, it was as if it just got noisier and more distracting in my head. Finally, that unsettling feeling overcame me and I bailed out. I saw the car and acted like I wasn't paying attention. I didn't do the job. I kept going and I knew I was in deep shit with the boss guy. I decided to lay low because not filling an order was seriously bad news. That guy was not someone you disappointed or you would feel it. He was wrathful and on drugs, so I knew I had to hide for a while. Two days of him blowing up my pager. 
Yeah, that's how long ago it was, lol. Then the calls and pages suddenly stopped. Come to find out, word on the street was that the cops pulled a big sting operation and that car I was supposed to steal was being monitored. My old boss sent some other kid to get the car and they followed the kid back to the scrapyard and did a big bust. That guy got arrested. That kid got arrested. A whole boatload of people got pinched, but no one ever came for me. To this day, I know God was looking out for me. At that moment, at that time, and I listened. Since that incident, I never pulled any shit again. I straightened up, got back into school, and graduated with honors. It was all because of that weird, supernatural moment. It's amazing how sometimes the universe seems to give us signs when we need them the most. It sounds like you were on a dangerous path, and that moment of unease saved you from getting into even deeper trouble. It's great to hear that they were able to turn things around and graduate with honors. It's important to learn from our mistakes and grow from them. And definitely listen to your gut feelings. Story three. When I was a kid, I lived in a little hamlet next to a camping area. Right at the opposite side of the camping area was a rather large, seemingly abandoned house. At the time, I was kind of into urban exploring, but I wasn't at the point where I'd break into buildings just in case maybe it was just a poorly maintained building with inactive occupants or squatted by questionable people. So I wandered on the property for a bit, climbed trees near the house, and looked at the building wondering about its story. I'm on the biggest tree on the property, against a wall overlooking the camping area, when one of the windows on the third floor suddenly explodes. There was no warning. I hadn't seen any lights or movements in the house. I don't remember hearing an impact sound or anything. Just straight up loud shutter noise and the window being completely completely gone. After a couple seconds, I heard gravel moving behind me on the camping side, so I turn around and saw two guys inching towards me. They notice that I've seen them, and one of them yells to someone else to call the cops while they grab me. I jumped off the tree and made a dash through the forest surrounding my hamlet, the camping site, and the abandoned house before making a loop around my hamlet and hiding between houses to lose them. I don't think really it's supernatural per se, but I still can't exactly think of a reason why the whole window would just blow up. If the guys behind me had thrown a rock in my direction, missed me and ended up hitting the window, I feel like they'd have heard some of that, and only one of the window panels would have shattered, not the whole window. The part about the window suddenly exploding is definitely eerie and makes me wonder if there was something more going on in that abandoned house. It's possible that it was just a coincidence and the guys chasing you had nothing to do with it, but who knows. Either way, it's definitely a story that will stick with you for a while. I don't know, maybe there was someone watching out for you. Story 4. I had just created a suit that rendered me completely invisible to the human eye. But what about the mechanical? I decided to test the suit at the thrift shop close to my home, my lab. I waited inside a clothes rack until the store closed and the owner went home. I actually fell asleep waiting and woke up pretty late, or early I suppose. I peeked out from between some dresses and slowly stood up. I saw the glow of the motion sensor as it was triggered. I freeze. It turns off again. I wave my arms, walk around a bit. Nothing. The suit works just like 007's invisible car in Tomorrow Never Dies. I suspect it doesn't hold up under quick motion. One way to find out, I sprint through the floor. Nothing. A huge success. But maybe it was a fluke. I sprint back and forth a few times, still nothing from the motion sensors. On my last test, I brush against a few dress racks as I almost fall from exhaustion. Now the sensors light up. Actually, maybe this is a good thing. I didn't think of an exit plan when I was done testing. I was gonna wait till morning then walk out. But now, maybe I can slip by the cops if they show up to check the sensors. The cop showed up 20 minutes later. One of them shone his light right at me. I walked out the door they came in and gave a mocking wave as I headed back home. Story 5. So listen, I was in grad school and staying in this kind of shared house situation with multiple other people in the house with me. I'd been working with organic proteins late night in the lab using this big container of cow's blood and I was pretty exhausted. Term paper due dates coming up, you know? I guess I must have slipped the package of cow's blood into my backpack on accident because when I got home, I tripped a little cubbing into my house and it broke open, spilling cow's blood all over the inside of my bag and the floor of the hallway. I ran to the kitchen to try and pour what was caught in my bag back into the container, but ended up spilling even more blood on the kitchen floor. Exhausted and defeated, I walked upstairs, still trailing blood, showered and passed out. Eventually, the police showed up. I guess one of my roommates woke up early, saw the blood, and assumed the worst. And I didn't want to get in trouble for stealing from my uni's lab, so I denied everything. It's understandable that you denied everything to the police, as you didn't want to get in trouble for something 
think that was just a simple mistake. But I mean, come on, you were covered in blood and your footsteps. However, it's always best to be honest in these situations as it can prevent misunderstandings and misinterpretations of the events that took place. Much better to be honest than go to jail. Story 6 Few people know, and I am speaking on condition of anonymity, that Elon Musk died two years ago from a rare bone marrow disease. But he had his brain cryogenically frozen and then implemented into a machine that supports his biological brain function. The machine is connected to the internet, and that is how he is able to communicate to the outside world, and to a team of personal assistants who take care of the machine and communicate with Elon's key management and some of the employees. Elon's dying wish was to have his body buried on Mars. When he first found out that he was going to die several years ago, he asked NASA if they could send his body to Mars. They said they had no capability to do that. They joked that he should start his own space program, but Elon did not find that joke funny. He went ahead and started his own space program. So you see all the rumors that there is a body in the trunk of the car are true, but it's his own body. Story 7. Over a couple of weeks one summer, me and some friends, all middle school, grades 7 to 8, snuck into a nearby school at night and just messed around. Nothing damaging. Ate candy out of desks, ate ice cream out of the teacher's lounge, wrote notes to teachers and hid them in desks. The first night we went in, I was gonna go into the library, had the door open, but a friend said no, don't. He claimed it wasn't him who said it though so we didn't go in. After that night, the library doors were locked, so we couldn't go in even though we wanted to. Then, one night about nine days later, our entrance, the rooftop hatch, was locked, and we couldn't get in anymore. The very next night, some guys got busted after climbing in through the library windows. It seems they had motion detectors inside the library, pointing away from the door we would have entered into the main area, connected to a silent alarm. We would have been busted if not for whoever said those words. Well, this story definitely has a suspenseful twist to it. It's interesting how sometimes even the smallest decision or comment can have a big impact on the course of events. In this case, it sounds like the friend who said no, don't about going into the library, ended up saving the group from getting caught by motion detectors and a silent alarm. I guess even if it wasn't your friend, somebody was looking out for you. Story 8. So I used to work as a security guard at a large office building. I often stole things like computers, desks, chairs, etc. from the offices. I was very careful and never took anything during my shift. There were only cameras in the lobby and on the outside of the building, not in any tenant spaces. One day I found a wallet on a desk and it had a few hundred dollars. I took the money and left the wallet. I wasn't on that night, no one saw me enter or leave the building, and I wasn't on any camera. A few weeks later, a lady I'd never seen before came up to the security desk and told me that she saw me take the money and even knew the exact amount. She said that she just wanted me to know that she knew. Then she left and I never saw her again. There is just no possible way she could have seen me. Story 9. I'm not a criminal. Perish the thought. However, when I was a young mother living near Prince Edward Island in Canada, my baby had a bad case of gas, and I couldn't get him to stop fussing. Well, I suppose somebody called the cops on me thinking I was an abusive asshole, and they showed up poking around our property. Well, baby caught a glimpse of their shiny badges and was instantly entertained. My eardrums welcomed the break. But then, they started to leave, and baby started fussing again. Ugh. Someone called them a second time, they came back, and Baby was once again quiet while being entertained by their shiny badges and flashing lights. They then left a second time, and it was back to Fuss City for me. This went on for a while until they finally left for good, and my husband came home with gas drops for the little one. But man, if that wasn't annoying. Okay, it's a good thing your husband was able to come home with gas drops to help your baby. Although, I've never heard of gas drops before. Can anybody explain it to me in the comments? I hope that situation never happens to you again. It's important for people to realize that just because a baby is crying, it doesn't automatically mean they're being abused or neglected. Parenthood can be tough enough without added stress like that. Story 10. I was trying to scare some local kids away from a development plot I bought with misappropriated funds. It included an old rundown mansion as well as a few other assorted outbuildings and a small graveyard, all of which I was intending to build on. Well, word got around that something was going on. Some investigators turned up and things got a little out of hand. I tried to get rid of them by dressing in sheets and rattling chains when they came snooping around my property, but it didn't deter them one bit. If anything, it made them more determined to get to the bottom of the mystery. I thought I would up the ante the next night by physically assaulting them in the dark and then raising my arms menacingly when they shone their flashlights at me. Okay, pause. OP, I get it. That must be annoying. But assaulting them? Come on, they're kids. 
Story 11. I am a pretty talented pickpocket with slight kleptomania. Lifted a wallet from a man as I came up behind him on the street. Almost zero contact. No one should have noticed a thing. But the man spoke out very calmly as I passed him. Could I have that back, please? Turned around to see he was wearing sunglasses. He lifted them up and revealed that he was blind. I was so completely dumbstruck and baffled that I apologized and gave him back the wallet. Wasn't too worried about him picking me out of a lineup anyways, and didn't want to be that guy that steals from the handicap. I guess his sense of touch was sharpened by the loss of sight or something like that. But for a brief second, I was sure this man was a warlock. Okay, okay, I know I shouldn't laugh, but this story is just too ridiculous. I mean, stealing from anyone is bad enough, but stealing from a blind man? That's a new level of low. And then to make matters worse, the guy calls you out on it and asks for his wallet back. I can only imagine the look on your face when he lifted up his sunglasses and revealed his blindness. It's like something out of a movie. But hey, at least he did the right thing and gave the wallet back. I guess it's a good thing he had that heightened sense of touch or whatever. Otherwise, who knows what you would have gotten away with. Story 12. A while ago, I worked as a curtain repairman and was hired to fix a set of upstairs drapes for an older couple. What they didn't tell me was that at the same time I was scheduled to come by, they would be out of town, and have a house sitter who they didn't inform of my presence. I parked my truck round back and went upstairs as they instructed me to, getting right to work. Next thing I know, a bunch of cops pull up to the house. I figure something must have happened in the neighborhood, and I go back out to my truck right as they send two canines inside. Good thing I left. Once they're done investigating, I return to the house to finish my job and start measuring the curtains. Story 13. Well, they noped out of there so fast they left their auras behind. As I gave chase, they ran through the first door on the right, but, and I shit you not, before I could follow them through, they came back out the third door on the left. At this point, I'm standing there scratching my head, looking quizzical. As far as an unscrupulous middle-aged property developer with a sheet over his head can anyway. When they mess me sideways, the dopey-looking one of the group pops his head out of a chest drawer in the middle of the hallway. Well, that was enough for me to just go back home to my wife and kids and re-evaluate my life choices. Was there a rational explanation? I wouldn't like to hazard a guess. Story 14. I remember a creepy story with a similar theme like this. A guy was talking about how he'd squat in a house that had been put on the market. He had a key to get in because he knew the owners and he'd sleep and shower there after work. He talked about how one night while he slept, the phone started ringing. He couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And then he saw police cars pull up in the driveway. He hid while they scanned the windows and doors and then booked it after they left. He later came back and said that the locks had been changed. He looked at the whole thing like the house was warning him he'd be kicked out. <laughs> That is definitely a creepy story. It sounds like something straight out of a horror movie, but where the house is helping. I can't imagine squatting in a house that's for sale. That's a risky move right there. And then to have the phone start ringing out of nowhere, I'd be terrified. Story 15. I suppose I broke into this one abandoned house once. It sat on the edge of the block and was behind a tall white wall. So you only saw what the yard looked like once you climbed over. Old shopping carts, toys, old doghouse, kind of dreary. Door of the house had boards on it, so I had to pry those off with a crowbar. Once on the inside, everything was black. It looked like the entire house had been coated in soot, from the ceiling to the bathtub to the windows. Just all black. Thought that was weird. Anyway, I spent a whole week there in the darkest point of winter, and I'm sure there was more than one reason I never got a night's sleep. Story 16. My company requested me to retrieve some information from a government agency, so I hired a petty thief to do the deed and steal employee data from their data center. He must have misheard because he said that he went in search of a safe instead of the data center. The guy came back claiming that he couldn't get the job done, that he was raped. I called BS. We hired a medical guy to use a rape kit to see if the criminal was telling the truth or not. Turns out we found animal hair on and in the guy. The DNA was similar to a bear and human, but neither a bear nor human. Could it have been Bigfoot? Story 17. All right, governor. I was tooling around Baker Street in London, looking to perpetrate some of the old skullduggery after this detective bloke left out of his flat with his doctor friend of his that he was making the Amores Congress with. So after they get done playing the old blanket hornpipe and leave, I enter all discreet and clever, go through the place, snatch his cache of cocaine, the guy is a rotten, sodding addict, but then see notes of a case he was working on. Something about a hellish spectral hound. Freaked me out right properly. I spilled on them fast and never looked back. Took up honest work as a chimney sweep after that I did. Okay, I don't know who this was, but it was pretty fun to read, so thanks.
Story 18. I live in a pre-Civil War town, just down the street from an old museum. Well, what most people don't know is that nobody ever bothered to put a lock on the side door leading into the pantry or kitchen. That place is some of the best colonial pastries and meat pies in the South. I haven't bought groceries in probably 30 years because they always have a fully stocked kitchen. I have to be careful though. Sometimes my rooting is interrupted by a nosy neighbor calling the cops while I'm busy stuffing treats into my pantaloons. I have to book it out of there and never have time to close the cabinets, damn it. Story 19. Tried to kill someone and had an out-of-body experience during it. I'm not exactly faithful, but I think something stopped me. Edit. He R-worded my sister and tried to R-word me when we were kids. Made me pretty messed up for a long time. I figured I'd kill him, then kill myself. Found him, beat him pretty good, tried to stomp his brains out, and just had a moment of snap out of this. This isn't right. Whatever it was, it wasn't me. Either way, I'm doing a lot better since then. Back in school. Healthy, married, doing the best I've ever done. Story 20. Not a criminal, but I'm a ne'er-do-well, in the sense that I take anything free that I can, legally, often out of a free bin or free giveaway location. So I went to the library, noticed a free bundle of books in the welcome lobby. Note, my habit is to always carry a bunch of bags in a backpack. After I put the books, I checked out of my car and I go back. No one else was there, but half the books from there before vanished in less than a minute. I look around, but nope gone. I still took the rest of the books. Story 21. I don't know about crime, but I was once doing about 85 on a barren backcountry road in an old Cadillac when the interior light suddenly came on and turned off again. I slowed down to check for an open door when I came around a turn and found a broken down car in the middle of the lane with the lights off. Swerving in a 77 Cadillac is no mean feat. And had I not slowed down, I would have had never had time to avoid a collision. Both doors were in fact closed and it never happened again. Story 22. One day, I went to rob the house of an old lady. Got to the door. Thought it was my lucky day. It was unlocked. So I quietly made my way to the living rooms and almost pooped my pants. The old lady was sitting in silence, staring at some unknown presence in the garden, not moving at all. I didn't want to be ghost food. So I left, and now I only rob young ladies. Change my life, man. Story 23. I was hired by an anonymous person to break into Area 51 and steal a document from a safe. I was busted by Bigfoot who flushed my head down the toilet, then gave me a prostate exam. Bigfoot has huge fingers. It hurt badly. Never again. Story 24. They're all out in the front yard staring at my window. Nosy people. I ignored them, repaired the curtains, packed everything up, and left. Some people just don't appreciate the trades. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.